Old Fashioned Love, Chapter 2, Doubts. When I woke up, AJ was gone, which, of course, isn't an unusual occurrence with her. She's an early riser, trying to get a few hours of working at the orchard before school for the longest time. Now, it's just ingrained in her nature. Me? I was always a few minutes shy of being an early riser and was always down for a nap, and the orchards were a great place for those. I got up and mended my way downstairs, yawning and scratching my bed head into something resembling orderly locks. I looked long into the mirror after using the bathroom and brushing my teeth. Would AJ like it if I grew my hair out a bit st or styled it maybe? Or would she be upset if I changed it at all? I had settled on the spiky feathered locks out of simplicity. A few seconds in the morning were all I needed to be ready. I once heard Rarity say she spent an hour on her hair some days. I don't have the patience for that. Hey Dash, Apple Bloom said as she walked into the kitchen. You're up early. Danger sleeping over at a farm girl's house, I said, dropping into a chair. I'm sure I'll find a nice treated nap under later today. Just don't do it in the orchard, okay? She said as she pulled on a wide brimmed hat. It's due to get sprayed later today on account of that weevil infestation we found. I nodded. Another yawn sneaking out as I did. I got up and rummaged in the cupboard for a moment before sitting down with a bowl of cereal and a glass of orange juice. I tried to focus on planning my workout for today, but I kept thinking about last night. AJ had let me talk to her parents' graves and gave me privacy while I did it. That was something that spoke volumes to me. About how she felt about me. How much she trusted me. Trusted me with her parents. And I was worried. How was I going to screw things up this time? I ate the cereal in silence, my mood turning the sugary meal slightly sour into my mouth. I had an idea, and I had just enough time to do it before my training session. I bent over at the waist for a moment, then stood and put my hands on my head, expanding my ribcage, which allowed for maximum expansion and let me catch breath faster. Bending over actually compresses your lungs and takes longer to recover from exertion. It was one of the first things you learn when you're serious about making a professional team. I had just done a 500 yard dash, timing myself at using my newfound speed. My time was down two seconds, but it still was too slow for my tastes. I'd never qualify for a starting spot with these times. I kicked at the grass angrily as I walked up a small hill and plopped down under a weathered old tree that grew next to the racetrack. I couldn't figure it out. I was fast, no doubt and I had destroyed records back at CHS, but trying to shave another three seconds off of a 500 seemed impossible. I scrubbed my hands across my face and sat there with my eyes closed as my breathing returned to normal. When I opened my eyes again, they fixed on an icy bottle being held in front of me. I looked at it dumbly for a second, trying to figure out where the bottle had come from. Are you going to take it, or am I going to have to dumb it on you again? A voice came from behind me. I looked up and saw a peach jam holding the bottle, and the arm was connected to the farm girl that I loved, even if I couldn't quite say it to her yet. Her face was split into a grin, the spray of freckles across her face even more evident from the angle I was seeing them from. The ones in her cheeks were the what everyone thought of, but there was a smattering of smaller ones across the bridge of her nose. They gave the usually serious woman a girlish charm, and I got to say, they looked good on her. I took the bottle and sipped it slowly. When did you get here? I asked. About the time you kicked the grass, she said, sitting next to me and rubbing my shoulders. What's eating you, Ace? I smirked at the nickname. She had started and called me that when I'd legit won against her in a dogfight simulator. The first time I played without me worrying about looking bad. It had started as a joke and grew into something more. I hadn't really picked up on it until our recent outing involved in a hang glider. It was kind of fitting. I felt smirk die into a frown and just sipped at the water. <sighs> I'm not fast enough, I said. You're joking, right? She said, tipping her hat back with her thumb. Even after that boost at camp? I mean without that, I said, hoisting a stopwatch on my neck. I need to get three seconds faster, but I can't seem to hit it. I think I'm against the wall. Why is it so important to be that quick? She asked. 
You already made the calls for the team, and you'll be training against folk who have slower times to begin with. I squirmed internally, not wanting to answer. But I also knew that she would be read me like one of those night ponies no graphic novels that Flutch had gotten into. I don't want to be just good, I said. I have to be my best. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Nah, I know we're not going to have one of those fits again, she said, turning a stare and look at me. It might have been a needed thing on the cruise, but I don't see why you're thinking like this again. I ran my hands through my sweat-soaked hair, the worry and exasperation overflowing. Because I don't want to screw this up, I cried, unable to stop some tears from bubbling up. She looked at me shocked as I started rambling. This is the best thing I've ever gotten, AJ, I said. Between the spot on the team and you, this is the best my life has been in a long time. I'm, I'm just worried if I can't stand up from the rest of the herd, I won't get any real playtime. And that'll hurt my chance on the pro teams. Beyond that, there's you. Me? She responded in surprise. You are more than a stupid show off deserves, I said, staring at my feet. I just wonder when I'm going to do something to drive you off or make you realize that you deserve better than me. And even though you have the farm and I still want to be able to contribute if we can get su super serious like Twy and Sunset. I, I, want, I want to... You want to prove that you can pull your own weight. She finished. Ah, uh, dash. You ain't gonna impress me. You know that. Uh, I feel like I'm just drifting sometimes, AJ. I admitted. Leaning over, I rest my head against her shoulder. I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. She ran a hand along my shoulders. Oh, I know, sugar cube. She whispered. I know. I closed my eyes for a second. I don't want to screw this up, AJ. I felt her hand slow a little. Us, I mean. I don't know what I'm going to do half time. On the other half, I'm scared stiff on the inside. <sighs> I don't know what I'm going to do either. She said softly. She put a hand under my chin and brought me up to look at her in the face. Where it is the one with the dating experience out of all of us, next to Sunny. I don't know for sure how this is supposed to work. Apples, now them, I know. She looked over towards the farm, just visible from the hill we were sitting on. Soil, feeds, ploughing and sowing, harvest time, planting season. Them's things I know. But my heart? It confuses the ever-loving blaze out of me sometimes. She looked back at me, her emerald eyes glittering. I may not understand it, but I know when something is important to me. And you are, Rainbow Dash. She whispered. You are important. I smiled a little, but I still felt down. <sighs> Thanks, AJ, I said. She reached over and nabbed the stopwatch from around my neck, the safety cord popping as she pulled it. She grinned at me and took her hat off and set it to the side. As I watched, she pulled the tie from her hair and ruffled it, its fullness causing it to cascade down around her shoulders like liquid gold. It, what? I started to say. I'll make you a deal, she said. If you can run the 500th in the time, you get a kiss. She put a finger on my lips as the grin spread. But if you don't, you gotta help me harvest the South 40 tomorrow. No magic allowed. I grimaced. The fact that I could fly in the orchards as I helped pick from time to time was pretty much the only reason I volunteered and I did. That, and the blonde country girls next to me, of course. Huh. <laughs> Seems like you get all the benefits, I said with a smirk. Help with harvesting or kissing a smoking hot girl. You going to run? She said with a smile, holding up the stopwatch. Or are you going to flap your gums all day? Just say the word. I said, jogging over to the sight line. Go! It's getting late, she whispered into my ear as we sat under the tree a few hours later. I nodded, thinking. Uh, yeah, it is, I suppose, I said. Rainbow, she said. Why are you so worried about screwing things up? You've been doing just fine so far. Oh, I don't know, I said. Sometimes it just feels too good to be true. And you know the old saying? I sure do, she responded, nodding. Thing is, though, neither of us know what we're doing, but we seem to be doing just fine. I rolled my hair a little, sighing, 
But isn't love supposed to be this massive flood of emotions? I asked. I mean, I keep hearing how people in love can't stop thinking about each other, doing little things with each other, and being generally annoying. I chuckled. <laughs> but we aren't like that. <laughs> oh? She said. I saw the flowers on my folks' graves today. And I know they didn't come from our garden. I blushed. It, it just seemed appropriate. I whispered. And running interference for me on A.B.'s birthday. You worked hard on that surprise party, I said. I didn't want the effort wasted. Oh, okay then, she said. Popped her hat on my head. When you see an apple, what goes through your mind? You, I said, before realising what I was saying. Sounds like you got the trifecta, she said smugly. Planting a kiss on the tip of my nose. Sides. She whispered into my ear, Truth be told, I'm more a little infatuated with you myself. We climbed to our feet and said back to the farm. I grabbed her hand and brought it up to kiss it gently. AJ, I said, You realise we just kinda officially said I love you to each other just now. She nodded. I reckon we did, she said. You know, I said grinning, You still owe me for a kiss. From one of those time trials you put me through. She grinned and took off sprinting. You'll have to catch me first, Ace, she said as she darted away. I grinned. I may have doubts about things, but I know a sure bet when I see one.